Hi. In this problem, we will we we are given that we can use an allowable stress of 155 megapascal. We are asked to determine the largest bending moment M that can be applied to the wide flange beam shown. Neglect the effect of fillets. So what do we have in here? So first thing, let's write what's given. So here we have an allowable stress of 155 times 10 to the power 6 in Newton over meter square or, or Pascal. We are given the shape of the cross section of the beam is a wide flange beam. We are asked to neglect the effect of fillets. Here we are asked to find the largest bending moment about the x-axis, which is this one right here. <clears throat> now, if we imagine that we have this beam and we cut it in half. Now, we said that the bending moment is about the x-axis. So, this yellow plane is called the bending moment plane. When we rotate the beam about the x-axis, it will cause the beam to concave up or concave down. Now, when the bending happens, it, it develops uh, internal normal stresses perpendicular to the cross section when the beam is bent. The green line, this one, is called the neutral axis that passes through the centroid of the cross section of the beam and perpendicular to the bending plane. So three things about neutral axis. It goes through the centroid of the shape. So in this case, we are given the centroid, which is in here. And uh, it runs along the axis of rotation, which is X. And it is perpendicular to the uh, bending moment plane, which is this. So here we define the neutral axis. And all right. So in this problem, we will use the elastic flexural formula, which is. So this is the <clears throat> normal stresses caused by bending the beam along the x-axis equal to the moment in newton times meter times the distance of normal stress from neutral surface so if we go back in here so this is our neutral axis as you can see as we increase the normal stress increase in here so that is the y value. So in this problem, we are asked to find the largest bending moment. So the largest bending moment happens in here because that will have the largest normal stress. Divided by moment of inertia of the cross section. So the cross section that we have is the flange, is the given flange sorry, the wide flange, with respect to the centroidal axis, and we are given the center of that shape. If we are not given, then we need to find it. So the internal normal stress of flexural stresses is caused by bending or flexing of the beam. So uh, for the moment of inertia of the cross section with respect to the centroidal axis or the uh, neutral axis what we will do is we will divide the cross section to into three known areas or shapes that we can use and these three shapes are rectangles so we can use reference tables for area moment of inertia so in here we divide it into shape one shape two and shape three and we will use this reference table right here for rectangular shapes. 
all right so from the moment so the question is which one of which which of these formulas we will use all right so we said that the axis of rotation happen at the x-axis so it's going to be either this equation or this equation but from from this definition right here it says moment of inertia of the cross section with respect to centroidal axis so we will so we we are interested with with this axis i x sub c so we will use this equation all right for shape one we have a rectangle all right and this rectangle have a base of 200 millimeter and it will have a height of 12 millimeter and on the side we uh, here we will have the table as a reference so uh, the, here there is so first thing we said that the axis of rotation is is along the x-axis right and it runs through the center of the rectangle so that is what we have in here so we can use this formula which is i x sub c which is this one right here all right but from the definition that we have is if we want to find the moment of inertia we want to find the moment of inertia with respect to the centroidal axis the centroidal axis of the whole shape of the wide flange shape so we are given the center we are we know the axis uh, of rotation which is the x-axis right here so we will use something called moment of inertia parallel axis theorem so that will be our neutral axis so uh, so simply what we will do is we will add the this parallel axis theorem which is area times the distance between the two uh, axis so we have this axis and this axis and the distance so this axis will be shifted to the neutral axis and it will go a distance of 104 millimeter so we will use this equation and we will plug in the given values and we will be able to find the area moment of inertia of shape one with respect to the centroidal axis of the whole shape which is the wide flange shape for shape three since it has the same dimensions and the same distance to neutral axis and it is symmetrical shape three will have the same value of, for moment of inertia so i sub one is equal to i sub three now for shape two we will here on the side we will have our reference table as always so here we have a height of 196 millimeter and we have a base of 8 millimeter and we know the axis of rotation happening at the x-axis and it runs through the center of the shape which is and it and and the center of this of shape number two runs along the center of the whole shape which is the wide flange shape so we don't need to use the parallel axis theorem in here so we will use this equation and we can plug oh this is supposed to be two now we can plug in the given values and we found the area moment of inertia for shape two with respect to the centroidal axis of the whole shape the wide flange shape so now we can we can add up the area moment of inertia to find the total moment of the cross section for the wide flange i1 plus i2 plus i3 we plug in the values that we found and we and and now we have the total area moment of inertia so now what do we have so we found the i total we know the allowable stress now we want to know what is the y axis or what is the y value so 
from this shape on the side so we said the y-axis is the distance from the neutral axis in our case we need to find the furthest point because we are asked to find the largest bending moment and the highest stress happen in here or it happens in here in one of these two so the distance is 0 0.11 meter from the neutral axis to the furthest point so this we found so now we need to solve for the moment of inertia we solve for the moment of inertia we plug in the given values and now we found the <coughs> moment about the x-axis which is 80,309 uh, Newton times meter. All right, so now this is problem 4.4. Now in this problem, we need to find, we are the same given values, dimensions, but in this, in this one, instead of finding the moment about the x-axis, we need to find the moment about the y-axis. All right, so the same, given as we have on with as we had in problem 4.3 and in this time we need to find the largest bending moment about the y-axis not the x-axis so in, we've in the x-axis we found this will be our y value and when we take the rotation along the y-axis then we need to find the va the y value would be this one all right, so let's imagine that we have this wide flange beam. We cut it in half. So in here, this y-axis, where the where it will be the axis of rotation. And as we said, the neutral axis runs through the center of the shape, which is given to us, which is right here, the center of the shape, given to us right here as shown. If not, then we need to find it. Two, it run, it the neutral axis runs along the axis of rotation which is the y-axis which is this green line neutral axis and it is perpendicular to the plane of the pending moment all right so this is our shape and as we did in previous problem we will divide it into three different shapes all right so Again, we will use the elastic formula and again and don't confuse that the moment of inertia of the whole cross section with respect to the centroidal axis of the whole shape and here we have our reference table now the axis of rotation this time happened in the x direction and we said that we want through the centroidal axis, which so we are interested in this. So it will be I, the area moment of inertia, where the Y is the axis of rotation runs through the center of the shape. All right, so for shape one, like before, we have a rectangle. It have a base of 200 millimeter and it have a height of 12 millimeter now the the uh, <clears throat> the axis runs along the y axis because that's the axis of rotation and uh, runs through the center of the shape and it runs along the neutral axis and so in this case we don't need to find uh, the uh, so we don't need to use the parallel axis theorem because it runs through the neutral axis so here we will have our reference table so we will use this equation so in this case we will plug in the given values now the difference in here is that the i x sub c the base times height q but the, in this one is the base q times height so this one, i y sub c, which is the, sh the i sub one for shape one, is eight million millimeter to the power four. Now for shape three, just like before, it have the same dimensions, the same 
uh, distant to neutral axis and uh, it's symmetrical so it will have the same value now for shape 2 uh, we have a rectangle it have a base of 8 millimeter and it have a height of 196 millimeter and the axis for this shape is with respect to the axis of rotation the y-axis and it runs along the neutral axis so we can find the so we can use the uh, formula for moment of inertia where the y-axis is the axis of rotation that runs through the centroidal axis of the shape and in our case the centroidal axis of the shape also runs through the centroidal axis or neutral axis of the whole shape so in this case we don't need to use the parallel axis theorem so we will plug in the given values and we found the i sub 2 so now we will need now we we need to find the total area moment of inertia by adding all the given area moment of inertia that we found then we will have our total area moment of inertia now it's in millimeter so the millimeter to the power 4 cancel with the millimeter to the power 4 and now we have we have the area moment of inertia in meter to the power 4 you know so we we have we know this we know the normal stress where the y axis is the axis of rotation so in here as you can see uh, this is our axis of rotation and this is our neutral axis so the furthest point is here so we want to find this value and this value will be 0.1 meter so we need to solve for m which we did in here we plug in the given values and then we we, we can we can find the uh, moment about y axis m sub y which is 24812 newton times meter 